Okay, so this is the scratch just booting up. So here we go. We're, we've booted up. I'm going to log in as root with the password that I set. And that's it. Um, if you see, if, if I do wget, we haven't got that. If I do links, we haven't got that. Links, we haven't got. Um, there's no GUI at all. And in fact, if I do df minus h, you can see that all we've got used is, in fact, I haven't got a cursor. This is just the desktop cursor that I'm recording with. Um, you can see that we've got 4.8 gigabytes that's in use and probably approximately probably a gig and a half of that, maybe two gig is uh, taken up with the sources, which includes the um, Linux kernel. Oh yeah, 2.6. So you can see the system is actually 2.2 gigabytes in size, the system itself without the sources. Um, I, I have to mention something at the moment that I have already installed a couple of BLFS uh, packages uh, and that's purely to enable the UEFI booting on the, on this machine. So if I show you which packages I've installed, it's it's been just the EFI uh, related packages um, which enable Grub to boot from an EFI subsystem. So that's that's the only BLFS packages I've installed. And obviously you might not have that if you haven't done the EFI boot, but um, as you can see what I do is I'll create a separate BLFS directory to store the BLFS files in, just so they're separate from the original uh, Linux from scratch packages um, even down to re-downloading the files in case they're slightly different or they've changed for the BLFS book uh, which may possibly have happened um, but apart from that uh, I probably will be installing some of these again uh, for example free type it's just a basic free type installation but there's a recommendation to install that with half buzz but half buzz hasn't been installed so once half buzz gets installed, then I will be reinstalling free type and it's quite possible that one or two other of these smaller packages um, I may be reinstalling. Um, but effectively when I reinstall them, it will be as if I haven't installed them. So I'll, I'll probably end up installing them again anyway, all of these. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing we've got to do is to get some sort of access uh, to the internet to download files and as I've said at the moment um, we can't do that and the prime way we're going to be downloading files on the command line is using wget so in the Linux from scratch, uh, beyond the Linux from scratch book which like I say you can't see because it's not another terminal um, I can't show it uh, so yeah what I'm going to do first of all is to search for wget on the browser in the index go to that installation page and on that page it shows that you can download the package either from an HTTPS uh, protocol location or an FTP protocol location uh, and as, as I've shown you already, we haven't got any browsers at all. If I type in Firefox, obviously it won't work anyway because we haven't got a GUI, but you can see there's nothing there to to actually download from. But we can use FTP. It's part of the, uh, I think it's part of Core Utils. Um, so it's there by default on any every Linux from scratch installation. And to use it, we need to go to FTP. Uh, we can either type in the location on the command line or when we're in there by using an open command. It's probably easy just to type it here. So it's from the book. It's ftp.gnu.org forward slash gnu. Uh, sorry, no, no directory. It's just the um, home, like top level domain. Um, the name for this we just put in anonymous 
and it's logged us in straight away because that's the, because of the name we've used anonymous and what we do now is to use cd to change the directories so we'll change the gnu and you can do ls here if you want to have a nosy around uh, next one we need to go to is wget and then that should have the file we want in there and you can see there's all different versions in there so now we can get ready to fetch a file because it's binary we need to tell it it's binary binary transfer rather than a text transfer which is the default and we also need to turn on a mode called passive which i believe can uh, improve the transfer I'm, i keep meaning to look into why that's a good idea to use i just know it is um, a bit more knowledge i might know if it really is a good idea but from what everything from what I've read everywhere is that it is the, a better option to turn on and then we use the command get to fetch a file so we just type in the name of the file wget-1.21.4.tar.gz and that should be the actually downloading at the moment and it's done so we don't need to use FTP anymore. If we left this, it would probably time out within half a minute or a minute or so and it will disconnect us because we have got a connection open at the moment. Uh, but it's best to just type in quit and we get back to the prompt. So now if we look at the file listing, you can see we've got um, wget there. And what I'm going to do now is to just do a checksum to make sure it matches what we've downloaded. So if I just check that with the book E7F7, it starts and ends in C853, which is correct. So that's that's a good download. So now I'm going to extract it, change into the oops directory, and start typing in manually the commands that are in the book. So first of all, we've got a configure command, prefix equals forward slash user sysconf the equals forward slash etc with ssl equals open ssl so i'll just double check that make sure there's no typos because it could be a seriously bad thing to do at this point that looks all right so i'll run that Now I have skipped some of the recommended and the optional packages so it could be that certain things won't get built and there'll be limited functionality. Uh, one thing that definitely will be limited functionality initially is there won't be any ability to connect to HTTPS um, protocol websites but that's not a problem because we can override that so it won't be a problem at the moment and the first thing we'll do after we've got this connectivity going is to uh, fix that. So that's okay. I'm going to make this now. And that's built. I'm going to run the tests just to make sure we've built something good. <coughs> As I say, there may be some failures. Um, Due to the fact that some packages haven't been installed, there's some there all to do with authorization by the looks of it. And there's some more there. So we had 65 failures, but that's not a problem. When we build the recommended packages and rebuild this, um, so those those failures will go. So let's now do make install. So now we should have a working wget. Yep, there's the help for it, and should we just do a version as well? Um, yeah, it's printed that up as well. So that's the wget fix. Now we can fetch stuff from the internet. So next thing I'm going to do is sort out the um, open SSH access. So I'm going to install that by hand as well. So I'm just going to look for that on the 
uh, BLFS book, do a control F again, open SSH and once again I'm going to just install this as a limited installation um, so there will be things missing from it but, um, and that also means it will be something that rebuild in, in the future when uh, I've got other packages installed for example you can see straight away Linux PAM is one of the dependencies so uh, OpenSSH it's only got one link so there's only one way of downloading this and this is from an HTTPS protocol link so it shows that we wouldn't be able to download it um, using FTP which is why it's important to get wget um, installed first of all so if I'm going to do wget H, type the URL in so it'll take a little while HTTPS FTP and actually did I tidy up no I didn't right let's try it again so wget https colon forward slash forward slash ftp dot open bsd dot org forward slash pub forward slash and the capital letters and lowercase matter here so you've got to get that right otherwise you'll get a URL not found or a 404 error or something like that open ssh portable forward slash open ssh dash nine dot four p one dot tar dot g z now what you find is we get this error saying that it's unable to locally verify the issuer's authority that's because we haven't got any certificates to verify against so all we need to do is do what it suggests add in this no check certificate and now it will connect and download it so now that's open SSH we've fetched so we can go ahead and install it so let's expand it and the first thing we've got to do is install a user and a group for SSHD to use so let's type these commands in very carefully, minus V, minus G, sys, minus M, 700, minus D, forward slash var, forward slash lib, forward slash sshd. So I'll just check that before I press enter. Install minus V, minus G, M, 700, minus D, var, lib, sshd. That's okay. Then group add minus g50 sshd check that that's okay then user add minus c single quote sshd space priv sep and as usual case will matter here so be sure to get the case right there minus d slash var slash lib slash sshd minus g sshd minus s forward slash bin forward slash false minus u 50 sshd so I'll just double check that again minus c sshd proof sep minus d var lib sshd minus g sshd minus s bin false and minus u50 sshd okay it's responded user add warning sshd uid 50 outside of the uid min 1000 uid max 60,000 range so that's okay that warning that's what we want so now the configure command minus minus prefix equals full slash user Minus minus sys conf duh equals four slash etc four slash ssh with priv set path equals four slash var 
lib sshd with default path equals four slash user bin with super user path equals four slash user four slash s bin colon user bin and with pid the equals four slash run so again i'll check that configure prefix equals user sysconf dir equals etc ssh with proof set path equals far lib sshd with default path equals user bin with super user path equals user s bin colon user bin and with pid equals forward slash run Okay, so that's completely configuring. I'll type in make to build it. So that's built, we can run make minus J1 tests. And as before, if things do fail here, it's probably not that big a deal. Um, as it will be, as I say, reinstalling this to get other functionalities such as PAM installed, but it's good to get a, an idea that it's not completely broken.
Okay, so that says it's passed, which is all good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to install the package. So make install, and then type in a few extra commands to install some main pages and documents by the looks of it. So minus V minus M seven five five contrib SSH copy ID. So I'm using the tab here just to avoid typos. So install minus V minus M seven five five contrib SSH copy ID to use a bin. And the next one's permission six four four. Contrib SSH copy ID dot one and to use a share man man one then install minus V seven five five minus D Use a share doc open SSH dash nine dot four P one use a share doc open SSH dash nine dot four P one and then install minus V six four four install License overview and readme star into user share doc open SSH nine P one. That's that. So it says there's one change to prevent roots logging in from SSH. Right well, at the moment, we've got only the root user so I'll have to leave that out for the moment but otherwise that's a good security thing to add in which I'll do when we rebuild the package because by then I hope to have a ordinary user um, there's some bits about installing or configuring to log in without a password and then there's a boot script we need to install for um, to start the server up automatically at boot time so I'm going to have to fetch that so let's come out of this tidy up and see if we can fetch this HTTPS this is quite a long URL this one and you in Linux from scratch dot org forward slash BLFS forward slash BLFS BLFS dash boot scripts forward slash BLFS Dash boot scripts dash two two three oh eight two four dot tar dot xz. Okay, so we've got to add on that no check certificate again. Okay, so now I can extract that. And I won't be bothering to remove this because there'll be other um, scripts that we'll have to install as we go through the BLFS book. So what I need to do here is, is take, type in make install dash sshd. That's done. So I should be able to start that daemon off now with this command. Start 
it started okay so what I'm going to do is just see if I can log in remotely from another terminal prove that it works so I'm doing SSH root at the IP address which is 192.168.0.250 it's asked me to authenticate the signature which I'll say yes I'll type in the root password and it says permission denied so it looks like I do need to change this option here it might already be configured that way so I'm going to edit that file and permit so it could be that by default it disallows root access so what I'm going to do here is I'll delete that paste it in twice and just edit this so me typing that in and then the book says to set this to no but I'm going to explicitly set it to yes save that and then I'll have to restart the server and now I'm going to retry accessing remotely and I've got in now so that's fine and if I do uh, who you can see there's two sessions logged there there's the one I'm on at the moment the teletype one and the remote one which has gone into a pseudo terminal is that I'm not sure what that is and you can see the source IP address that it's come from so that's okay I've just logged off so if I rerun that command you can see that remote connection has disappeared so that's uh, all we need to do now directly on the terminal in the next video what I'll be doing is I'll be accessing remotely so I'll be able to put the browser on the screen I'll be able to copy and paste commands directly from the browser so it'll be a bit easier to see what I'm doing and easier to actually do the installation